In this video, we're going to be talking about dynamic user inputs and how you can collect information based on information generated or collected earlier in the workflow. Let's go ahead and get started. So here I have an AI agent and inside of this workflow, we're doing a couple of things. We are scraping a URL and then we're going to extract the entities mentioned in the article that uh, we are scraping. And let's go ahead and run this just to see what happens. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the draft agent and we'll copy this URL and then it will begin scraping and we'll get back this list of entities. So this should take just a couple of seconds and should be able to see that we have this list of all of the entities mentioned and that includes, uh, you know, agencies and organizations as well as people. Now let's say we had something later in the workflow for the purposes of this demo. I'm not uh, showing you anything, but I just want to illustrate how the dynamic user input works. And let's say as an example, we wanted to present the option to pick one of those entities to do some additional research on. Well, the way we would do that is by utilizing these dynamic user inputs. And let's go ahead and add a user input. And in this user input, I'm just gonna go ahead and link it to the next block here. We are going to add uh, a text choice. And I've created this dynamic input text choice. You can obviously name it whatever you want. Um, and we can say something like, which entity would you like to research further and then the choices are going to be dynamically loaded in and we need to do that via a variable and the variable entities needs to have some specific json so here's what we're going to do we're going to go in the previous block and we are going to generate the proper uh, json for this you can see here i'm going to switch this to json and I have this already preset, but you want to make sure that you're using this exact structure because it needs to include a label and a subtitle. So this is an array. Actually, let me uh, open this up so we could see this a little larger. This is an array and inside of the array are different objects that include a label and a subtitle. Now, in this case, I'm simply going to include the entity name and some information about that particular entity. And we can utilize this uh, via a variable. So I'm gonna save this as the variable entities. And we wanna make sure that that variable entities is being presented here in the dynamic source um, form here at the very bottom. So next time we run this, it's going to present the user with different options. Now we want to make sure that we are including this dynamic input here in the user input block. And then we're simply going to just present that back to us. But you could uh, do something with that information later in the workflow. So let's go ahead and run this one more time. I'm going to go and reload the draft agent. And we're going to enter this URL one more time. And then, uh, provided that we gave it the correct JSON, it's going to ask us which of the entities we would like to research further. So you can see now it is generating the background message. And now we get this dynamic input. And this input was generated via the uh, previous uh, list of entities that we had pulled previously. So let's go ahead and we'll click on one. And you can see here that this is the, the output that we get here. The, the label is what is going to be saved into the variable uh, base uh, for that user input. So that is the first kind of dynamic user input. You can create this list and dynamically render that list to uh, your end user. Now let's talk about the other type of input. And for this, I have a bit more of a complex uh, workflow created, uh, and we're utilizing concepts that we've covered in all the previous videos. So here I'm doing a simplified version of the deep research agent that's available on Mind Studio. And you can see here that we collect a user input called topic. And then based off of the topic, we're generating an array of Google que search queries. And then we're going to run this workflow that's going to conduct all of that 
research. So if we look at this, it's going to search Google, it's going to scrape each individual URL, and then it's going to uh, process and extract all of the um, information from all of these various web pages. And that's going to include a title, summary, insights, quotes, and a TLDR list of bullet points. That's going to get passed uh, back up. And then we're going to generate our final report here. Now, here's the problem is that if we were to run this, I'm going to go ahead and set this as the entry flow. And let's say we had this um, and it asked us, oops, let me go ahead and change this label to say, what would you like to research? And we'll go ahead and refresh this just to make sure that uh, this example makes sense and it's not just label text. So let's say we wanted to uh, do some deep research on a topic and the users enter something super simple like just dogs. Well, that's quite a broad thing to research and that could yield some unexpected results. And so we want to actually gather additional context around this uh, bare bones uh, search query so that we can uh, fine tune and, and understand actually what the user wants to research. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a, a new block and this block is going to be called user context. And you can see that we are able to provide this uh, with a prompt because it's going to dynamically render questions in order to gather more context so that we can generate better uh, search queries for the rest of our workflow. So let's go ahead and we want to say, uh, we want to provide it the topic. So let's go ahead and provide the topic here. And then we want to give it some instructions. Um, help the user refine the topic that they'd like to research, gather more contextual information in order to perform a full research report on the topic provided. I'm just kind of making up this prompt as I go. We could probably optimize this a little bit, but now that we have the prompt uh, all set, we can have a couple of settings here. We have the interview depth, and this is going to specify the level of context gathering. So you have a few options. You can do the quick one, you can do a medium depth, or you can do a very thorough depth. Uh, I would recommend that you start with quick as it's going to just ask some more surface level questions and usually that is enough. Um, if you go uh, all the way to thorough, this could potentially ask a uh, hundred different questions. And so you really want to make sure that you're getting uh, the right amount of information for the particular task. In this case, it, the task is generate some Google search queries. So let's go ahead and set this back to quick. You can also determine the maximum amount of questions that you allow this block to ask the user. So again, you can go up to a hundred questions if you'd like, and this block is using AI to decide whether enough context has been gathered. I would recommend that you start small and see if that works. And if you do need to collect additional information that you increase the question uh, max size. So now I'm going to save this as a variable called topic details. Here we go, topic details. And then we can use this in several places later in our workflow. And you can also uh, format this as JSON or text just like you would uh, some other blocks. I'm just going to keep it as text here. So in my generate text block, I'm going to actually add an additional tag here to include the topic details. So let's go ahead and include the topic details just to provide that additional context and make sure that we include the topic details here. And then uh, as this workflow runs, it's going to use those topic details to create a uh, more specific search for our research report. So now that we're, we have the uh, topic details being added in here, it should give us better search queries meaning that the search results will be better. And then let's say we also wanna provide those topic details in our final uh, block, which actually generates the report. 
So I'm going to go ahead and enter the topic details one more time so that it has all of this additional context uh, in terms of what specifically that user is looking for. And then we're providing the research materials and asking it to create a lengthy and detailed research report synthesizing all of this information. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. We can preview this by opening up the draft agent. And let's try this again. We're going to put in dogs and we're going to go next. And then we're here in this, in this, uh, uh, user context block. And so you can see that it is dynamically rendering these, uh, these additional topics. It's asking us a little bit more information saying, well, what about dogs? What draws you to researching dogs? And so we can say, I want to learn about dog behavior. So that gives it a little more context. What's the purpose for researching dog behavior? And I could say, I'm getting a dog. Okay. What kind of information are you looking to find out about dogs now that you're getting one? And I'm going to say, uh, training and behavior. What's the primary target audience for your research on dogs? This is for myself. What's the preferred depth and scope? And let's say I want a general overview. And then it decided that it has enough information to proceed to the next step. So you can see how by using this user context block, we actually get a lot more contextual info and inside of the debugger, it looks something like this. So you can see that there's a specific inquiry area and then this ends up filling out this table, which then gets added to wherever we use that variable downstream in our workflow. So now you can obviously see that this uh, workflow is doing a lot of scraping because it's running five separate queries and then scraping all of the um, articles from that query. And then it's going to generate a big old report for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to skip ahead to when this workflow has finished running so that we can check out the end result. Okay, so this has finished processing and let's take a look. You can see here that we are running uh, a bunch of different workflows, looks like almost a uh, hundred different workflows. And the subscrape workflow is super simple. It's just scraping the content and bringing it back. Um, we're running this research flow, uh, which we talked about previously. And you can see here that it is passing through uh, this uh, uh, details, the topic details here into our workflow and what we get as a result is this uh, long form article that's going to cite all of the um, the information based off of all of the uh, work that we had done in the previous step. And so this is super useful because it allows you to collect additional uh, contextual information, especially as you're doing more complex tasks that will require additional context. And it allows the AI to uh, create that context and figure out what it needs in order to complete the task that you're asking it to do. So hopefully you learned something in this video. If you like this video, drop us a like, subscribe to our channel for more updates to Mind Studio. If you have questions, don't forget to leave a question in the comments section of this video. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.